Things are pretty tough for Marvel right now, but I gotta tell you, I think Kevin Feige has a team here, a very good team in fact, and I'm curious to hear your thoughts on who I think will be on the next Avengers team, uh, and also who you think has the best chance. But, you know, it, it's a scary discussion, but one that I think is starting to maybe pull into focus a little bit. Oh, fascinating. All right, so Avengers 5. It ain't got no director, it ain't got no title, and it ain't got no villain. Whew! But still, I think that there might be something here. Maybe I think in some ways this frees this installment. But I have to say also, with Michael Waldron writing both Avengers 5 and 6, I still feel that, speaking of odds, that they're good that Secret Wars will just get moved up, and you will have that be the next Avengers film. And in such a film, you wouldn't really have a traditional Avengers lineup because everyone in the MCU for multiple universes would be fair game. It would it would be like an end game scenario where you pretty much included everyone. Uh, does Marvel have the bandwidth for that right now? Can they afford not to, considering they have so many freaking characters in play right now? That might be the best way to handle it and to clear the deck after the Fox acquisition. Have that have that hurrah. And you know, uh, not too much t not too much time passing after No Way Home. But that would mean that a new team could emerge out of Secret Wars. And so there, so we're getting a new Avengers team no matter what. The order and the timing are, the, are still in question, but one's coming. So last year, I made a video about the potential lineup for Avengers Kang Dynasty, based on which characters I had heard Destin Daniel Cretton was partial to. But as I said, he dropped out, and he's in fact even pursuing another franchise at another studio. So. I think he, I don't really think his his favorite characters are very much, uh, you know, something Kevin Feige's thinking about right now or anymore. And then Kevin Feige has a lot to think about because Marvel is very much in flux after the last year has been just so difficult. Uh, also, because Kevin Feige got a Disney Plus mandate when the service launched, he in turn launched, as I just said, way too many characters. There's a, like, like at least 20 candidates for the new Avengers team, and the team will probably only have about six members. So some fans are gonna be disappointed. The, the name of the game is minimizing that disappointment. Uh, by the way, side note, while the MCU Fantastic Four might factor into an Avengers story, right? Only Johnny and Ben have ever actually been members of the Avengers, and they weren't exactly iconic members. So since they're brand spanking new, I didn't include them in my predictions here. The Fantastic Four do not factor in, because uh, they've always been really kind of doing their own thing. They might cross paths with the Avengers again, but I don't see them for now having any of their members on, because you know they have to focus on that film. They're their own team. But I did factor in the, inter the Eternals, by the way. They are on my list. So the OG Avengers lineup was fantastic. The foundation of the MCU for a glorious decade. And you know, there was, it was a little bit more under control back then. They got, their, they got the trilogies first. You know, it was very much, there was order to it. Uh, instead of, I think now it seems a little bit more chaotic. Uh, but as well as things went, they only had one female member uh, of the core team and no diversity. So obviously for today's audiences, that's gonna need to change. So I'm going to present who I feel are currently, things are constantly changing, but as of right now, the top candidates for the new Avengers team. In other words, in the order of how I feel, who I feel is most likely to get drafted by Feige. But we're gonna start with the least likely, least to most, because I know you guys love the anticipation of working our way backwards uh, through a list. And I want to stress that this is for the main roster, six, like six candidates or so, because of course, and as we've seen in many Avengers movies, other characters can show up and you know be support here and there, but I'm talking the core team, the core team. All right, and as always, I invite you to share your thoughts and play along down below. Number 20, again, the least likely to be on the new Avengers team, new Black Widow, Yelena Belova. I know, I know, but let's not forget that she's now the star of her own movie, Thunderbolts, AKA Black Widow 2. And on that, in that movie, she has her own team. It's her team. And to put another Black Widow on the very next Avengers team, I think it would feel a little repetitive. I mean, She's getting her own movie with her own team, which, you know, it's gotta, it's gotta sting Scarlet, Scar, uh, Scarlett Johansson a little bit, 
But of course, ScarJo, who produced Black Widow, did personally select Florence Pugh as her successor. And that was a very kind uh, and smart thing to do. She, ch she chose well. And, you know, ScarJo definitely was iconic in the role. I love Yelena, and I'm very excited about Thunderbolts, but because she's got that whole movie, I don't see her being on the new Avengers team. Number 19, War Machine. Same reason. War Machine is getting his own film, Armor Wars. Come on, AI Tony Stark. That's what I'm hoping and, and betting is the whole point of that film. So there's no need to include him on the new Avengers lineup. However, though, speaking of AI Tony Stark, if he does indeed join the MCU, you better believe he's going to assist the Avengers in some capacity. So when he does, expect Rhodey to show up as his handler. Even one of them being digital can't break up that friendship. I love it. All right, number 18, Hawkeye. Obviously, we are all thrilled that Jeremy Renner is not only okay, but getting better all the time. But as an Avenger, I think he's really had his run. He even got his own series. And on that note, as for Clint Barton's future in the MCU overall, I see him as a better candidate. In fact, I see him as a very good candidate to mentor the young Avengers. Uh, already teased, that team was already teased at the end of the Marvels, by the way. Uh, Vision mentored the young Avengers in the comics. Uh, but I think that Clint would be a better match to do that in the MCU, considering his strong relationship, not just with Kate Bishop, but his background in special forces. Uh, he, where, you know, he, he's from Nick Fury's team. Nick Fury, uh, I mean, uh, Clint and Natasha were Nick Fury's uh, operatives on the Avengers team. So I think Clint would be great to be the Nick Fury of the young Avengers. All right, number 17, Ant-Man and the Wasp. If Kang ain't invited to the party anymore, how can these two be invited, right? Bad box office is gonna take a lot of characters out of competition who maybe at one point might have been front runners. But, you know, the box office has changed things. And these are two characters that have definitely been hit by bad box office. Paul Rudd, though, can feel good that he got the chance to really shine in Civil War and Avengers Endgame. He was excellent. And while I feel bad that the Wasp, uh, the original leader of the Avengers in the comics, has never even been on the team in the MCU, nobody can deny that Evangeline Lilly has really stuck her foot in her mouth multiple times, uh, you know, you know, with, with the press, etc. So I really feel if you're going to bring the Wasp in, people would like to be Michelle Pfeiffer's version of the character. But again, she was in the absolutely awful Quantumania. Oh, I just don't think you want anybody from that movie. Number 16, Moon Knight. I love Moon Knight. Hear me out. This was what he was one of Dustin Daniel Cretton's favorites. He wanted him on the team. But with Cretton no longer there to champion Moon Knight for the big leagues, is the character really ready? Not to mention, he's three characters in one, with the reveal of the third character being the cliffhanger ending of Moon Knight's series. How can we throw him into a team movie without resolving you know, the third persona first? I'd rather see Moon Knight season two than put him on the Avengers. And that was sort of soft announced. Where is it, Foggy? Any updates on that? I definitely want Moon Knight to come back, definitely. But I don't think he's ready to be on the Avengers. Number 15, Captain Marvel. Talk about box office problems. What a difference a flop can make, particularly one as epic as the Marvels. The Marvels told Quantumania to hold her cosmic beer. Oh, at one point, Captain Marvel was expected to not just be on the new Avengers team, but to be one of the people leading it. They even worked to lay that groundwork in the comics. And it didn't really work there either, by the way. So I think Kevin Feige might have lucked out here. Uh, I mean, there's nothing lucky about how the Marvels performed, but at least, you know, the character didn't take down the Avengers. Uh, but, you know, they put Carol Danvers as a leader of the, of the Avengers in the comics to try and, you know, win fans over ahead of maybe doing it in the MCU. Did not work. But Carol Danvers is immensely powerful. You have to wonder, how could she not be on, the, on an Avengers team? But luckily for Feige, they've already established, established that she often doesn't come around to Earth. She's often MIA. She's got, you know, she's got stuff to do in the galaxy, man. So after, again, the biggest flop in MCU history, she'll likely continue to only be called in for targeted strikes. And I'm okay with that. I think, I thought that, you know, short and sweet in Avengers Endgame. So I think she's not going to be totally off the board. But I mean, I just don't think they're going to make her a main member of the team after she was so resoundedly rejected by audiences. All right, number 14, Daredevil. That's how big a flop the Marvels was. I am more confident that Daredevil will be on the Avengers team than Captain Marvel. 
Why? Because he's the opposite of her and that he's just so popular. He's just so darn popular with the fandom. And, and there's a precedent too, by the way. He's been on the Avengers at least twice. I think once was a guest star, but we've got the comics to prove it. Now, sure, Matt Murdock isn't exactly on the level of the big guns on the team, but if Clint and Natasha can be Avengers, why can't Daredevil be the new version of them on the team? I think it, it, it mirrors that balance that they had. I think he can do it, and hey, it would likely help with today's super sensitive world to have a lawyer on the team, right? In the minute, mission, mission sensitive legal advice. Although, She-Hulk is also a lawyer, and I think the odds of her being on the team are better. We'll discuss her shortly. All right, number 13, Shang-Chi. Where is Shang-Chi? His movie was well received and did well at the box office during the pandemic. And we're supposed to be getting a Shang-Chi too. That was announced. Um, and I've heard that Cretton wanted Shang-Chi to be in his Avengers lineup, but Cretton is off the Avengers. And who knows what's happening with Shang-Chi too, because Cretton is now again working on projects outside of the MCU and Disney. The animated zombie show, by the way, was also supposed to feature Shang-Chi. And where the heck is that? That's also stuck somewhere. There is, of course, I think, the glaring issue of China not wanting anything to do with Shang-Chi, possibly because of Sima Liu's very uh, loud past comments about China. Uh, Liu has also managed, uh, Liu has also managed to upset some corners of the internet as well. But it was just in Barbie where he did a fantastic job and he hosted the People's Choice Awards. So right now, I think Sean Chi's best bet would be to focus on making that sequel happen than being on the Avengers. Because really, I, when you really think about it, no matter, I love Sean Chi and I loved his movie, but Feige is really not gonna risk not getting a Chinese release date for the next Avengers movie. And if Simu Liu is in it, that's a real possibility. All right, number 12, Doctor Strange. Ah, Doctor Strange was fantastic in Avengers Infinity War. And he's likely to be important in Secret Wars as well because of the multiversal element to that story. But because of all that, I feel it's time for other characters to get a chance to shine in the, on the Avengers. Also, after Doctor Strange 2 came close to a billion dollars, I think that's largely due to Wanda, but it, is his, it was his movie. And Clea, a very important character for Doctor Strange, was introduced in an end credit scene. Doctor Strange 3 is most li likely the next step for the character. And speaking of other teams, you know, Yelena Belova is getting her Thunderbolts team. We've said, why isn't there a mystic team based around Doctor Strange? Bring Wanda back, uh, Loki. I think that would be very, very popular. Uh, and, you know, allow those characters to thrive, even though maybe there isn't room for them on the Avengers uh, lineup. That's what I think is the best course for Doctor Strange. All right, number 11, White Vision. I love Vision too. I still love a lot of these characters, don't you? Uh, even the new version of him, but I think we're more likely to see him pop up in a West Coast Avengers scenario, like maybe on Disney Plus on the new Wonder Man show, start building out the LA corner of the MCU, uh, then to have him come back to the Avengers. Remember, he was already a second string member for several films. And you might be saying, well, if Wanda is an Avenger, I know a lot of you would like to see that. We haven't gotten to her yet, so I think she's pretty high up here. Shouldn't Vision be one too? Well, while their love story is, of course, iconic, I'd hate for them to be stuck together always as a pair. I mean, they were apart for Multiverse of Madness, but I'd like to see Wanda in a more heroic fashion out on her own without having to be half, one half of a pair. I love them together. I love them together. I want them to come back together someday, but not just quite yet. Oh, and also there, of course, were rumors of a standalone vision show on Disney Plus, but Foggy is dialing back his Disney Plus plans after diluting the brand, so I'm thinking the vision show maybe is getting less and less likely. All right, number 10, The Eternals. Their movie was also a giant bomb, but it was really a mess in many ways, but I don't think it was the characters themselves. There are some good, charismatic, very powerful characters here that I wouldn't get rid of, particularly Icarus, Kingo, and Makari. Kingo and Makari would bring much needed diversity to a, a new Avengers team. Neither one of them really got a chance to shine in Eternals. Uh, Kingo though also brings fantastic comedic relief and Disney loves him. He's doing a lot of Star Wars stuff, etc. He's doing really well right now. Not to mention Marvel is huge in the Middle East and South Asia. Perhaps that is the area of the globe that Marvel is the most popular. 
So I think that he would be a great addition, potential addition. And since we can't have Quicksilver, sadness, although of course the multiverse could always change that, but another speedster would be welcome. And the Makari scenes were some of the best in Eternals. Speaking of great action, Icarus looked incredible in action in that movie, but his being evil might be a bit of an issue. As for Angelina Jolie's Thena, she was very good, but maybe too expensive for a group film like The Avengers. Uh, plus, she really is just a knockoff of Wonder Woman, and does Feige need that drama? Eh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't think, I don't think The Avengers needs her. I think Kingo and Makari are the best bets out of this movie, or this team. All right, number nine, The Hulk. Poor Hulk. He can't, he can't have his own movie. Even though the situation with Universal has finally been resolved, as Mark Ruffalo himself recently pointed out, it would just be too expensive to do an entire Hulk film. But do we want him back on the Avengers? With Bruce Banner having already worked through his demons on the She-Hulk show, often off camera for some stupid reason, and having already dabbled with romance with Natasha, I don't really know where there is left for him to go. Right? I mean, you, I mean, especially in an Avengers story, what can he really bring to the team? All that's really left is World War Hulk, and that would have to be a standalone show or series. And Marvel, it seems, doesn't want to sink the money into that right now. And also, as for having a Hulk on the team, we've got another option who I think is more likely. And yes, again, we're still, we're She-Hulk. She's up there, as you can see. We're getting to her. Number eight, Thor. What? He was also on the original team. But yeah, I think having a familiar face could really help, especially one that's a lot of fun and a big powerhouse. Now, audiences didn't care for, for, for Thor Love and Thunder. However, I think most fans would agree that it wasn't Chris Hemsworth's fault. Thor is an immortal god. It makes perfect sense that he would be a constant on the team. That's what they've done on the animated series What If, and I think it's worked. I like that. And with rumors that Thor 5 is still in development, minus Taika Waititi, it would be good to keep the character not only in the public eye, but to hopefully undo some of the damage caused by Thor Love and Thunder. Let him have a good, a good appearance in the next Avengers film. Uh, all right, number, I mean, a lot of these arguments, of course, do change if, like, Secret Wars comes along first, but I, I mean, I think they still, to some degree, uh, work, uh, no matter what the order might be. All right, number seven, Wanda. Part of me wonders how Wanda could not be on the team, considering, considering her history as an Avenger, her raw power, which she's finally, I think she's only just gotten started with that, and of course how hugely popular the character has become. However, then I also remember Elizabeth Olsen's recent lack of interest in returning to the MCU, and that Feige made the call, inexplicably, to continue Wanda's story without her, with Agatha, uh, whatever they're calling it now. Then, of course, there's uh, her being turned into a very nasty villain in Multiverse of Madness. She killed a lot of characters. Even if they were multiverse characters, she's got, you know, a lot of, a lot of red in her ledger, right, as Natasha liked to say. So she might have a longer path to redemption ahead of her, like Loki, instead of going right back into the Avengers. And that's right, just like Vision, she was technically already on the team for a couple of movies. Number six, Black Panther, Shuri. Yes, both Black Panther movies did so well, even the second one with Shuri in the lead. I think that's important to remember. But not only did those films do well at the box office, but the character has a very long track record in the comics of being on the Avengers. So I find it very unlikely that Black Panther wouldn't be a part of a new team. Uh, but as for it being Shuri, I personally love the idea. I love Shuri as the new Black Panther, and her taking on the mantle is backed up by the comics. But some of you might counter that speaking of the comics, Shuri's Black Panther has never been on the Avengers. It's always been T'Challa's version of the character. However, as a tech genius who's now also in the field, she is perfectly positioned to be the new Tony Stark of the team. I think to some degree, Kevin Feige is going to try and repeat those roles. Uh, that's why I like Daredevil as a potential stand-in for Natasha and Clint. Here I see Shuri as maybe the new Tony Stark. And who's going to help work his AI if he comes back? Now, I know a lot of you are eager for T'Challa to return as Black Panther, maybe even as you know T'Challa Jr. taking that mantle on. Although, is he headed for Young Avengers first? I don't know how fans are going to feel about that. But I have to say, I think that Shuri has earned at least one movie as an Avenger, and I'm excited to see it. Number five, She-Hulk. Some of you might feel that these, I'm getting a little controversial here, but I love these characters. I think they're great and great female characters and just both so powerful, funny, I love them. 
All right, now I know a lot of people like to hate on the Disney Plus She-Hulk show, but I think we can all agree that was not Tatiana Maslany's fault. She is still, I would say, sensationally well cast. Sensational She-Hulk, for those of you who know your comics. And and that She-Hulk's potential as a character in the MCU has barely been broached. I mean, we need another take at this. She-Hulk is not only a long-standing on and off member of the Avengers in the comics, but a popular one. And she loves being on teams. She's been on a bunch of teams in the comics, including the, the a Fantastic Four. I would really like to see her in event, on the Avengers team. Sure, another season of She-Hulk might be too expensive, just like a whole Hulk movie, but I think on the Avengers, they've proven before they can afford it because Hulk's been on the team. So let's have She-Hulk be a breath of fresh air. Ah, and she's also a lawyer. You know, she has a little bit, she's a little difficult, right? Uh, she's not, her heart's not really into being a superhero. Uh, I think that was a weird choice for the show to make, uh, but that's what they did. But I feel that we can still work with that because she, we might be able to sell her, right? We might be able to sell Jen on the Avengers being a sort of superhero United Nations. And I think that would really appeal to her. I like it. I like it. Maybe she can get a little pressure from her firm too, right? I'm sure they'd love to have a member of their uh, firm on the Avengers. All right, number four, Star-Lord. Considering the tease at the end of Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 3 that Star-Lord will return, where else is he going to return besides the Avengers? Sure, they might have meant Secret Wars, and I think to some degree they probably do mean Secret Wars, but Peter Quill would be a great addition to the Avengers officially, uh, you know, as, as a team. Particularly because there's no denying it at this point, Chris Pratt seems to sell tickets. He's coming off of an incredible run, and he's proven to be a great team player, both on screen and off. He will promote. And as Kevin Foggy works to diversify his Avengers, including the conservative Pratt, I think would balance that out, those efforts out, for the toxic fans, I'm sorry, who are unfortunately against such efforts. Uh, I think it's good. I think it's a smart idea uh, from a creative and business perspective. Rocket Raccoon, speaking of business perspectives, Rocket, uh, Rocket Raccoon and Nebula in particular were fantastic additions in Avengers Endgame. I loved Nebula on the team, but she's retired. I think bringing in another Guardians of the Galaxy member would be a great idea, not only because everyone, liked the, the, everyone loves the team, but also because they built all those new theme park attractions for Guardians of the Galaxy. So you gotta keep that brand front and center somehow. And putting Star-Lord in the Avengers would definitely check that box. All right, number three, Captain America, Sam Wilson. One of the safest bets to be on this new team, even if his upcoming movie does bomb, because you can't have an Avengers team without Captain America. He's got to be on the team. He's got to be leading the team. And I think Sam has proven without a doubt, particularly on his Disney Plus show, that he'd be an effective and compassionate team leader. His background with Veterans Affairs, which I love about his character, has been really interesting so far, and I think would continue to be interesting in an Avengers movie. Plus, with his wings and the shield, as again we already saw in the Disney Plus show, he adds a really great dynamic to action sequences. Oh, I think he's going to be great. All right, so now, here's last two. Here's where we, we get really interesting and also work hard to ensure that fans will love this new Avengers team and get so comics accurate. It's beautiful. The only question is who's number two and who's number one, right? All right, so number two, I think it's Wolverine. Will it be Hugh Jackman as Wolverine or someone else? That's, I think, the remaining question mark. There are already rumors, because there are already rumors that before uh, Deadpool and Wolverine and Secret Wars are done, Marvel will have introduced other actors as Wolverine. Oh, I've heard Hugh Jackman will at least be still doing Secret Wars, but can he pass up being on an Avengers team officially? Maybe he could even come on as Old Man Logan, who's also been an Avenger. But there is a huge precedent for Wolverine being on an event, being an Avenger. It's it's iconic, and Kevin Feige can finally capitalize on that. So with or without Hugh Jackman, I think Feige will. Which leaves number one, that's right, you guessed it. I mean, he's the only one left. He's the last one standing, number one, Spider-Man. I think he will definitely be an Avenger. And yeah, Tom Holland already appeared in Civil War and Infinity War, quite memorably in fact, but he's never been an official Avenger. Walking around the compound, bonding with the team. These are not only perfect opportunities for the character, but for Tom Holland's version of the character. Like, for instance, we didn't get this yet. Can you imagine his, his interactions with Star-Lord? The pop culture conversations. He's got so much to catch Star-Lord up on. I mean, and also an onward reunion. They have great chemistry. 
Tobey Maguire and Andrew Garfield are rumored to return for Secret Wars, but other rumors suggest that Feige doesn't want to keep them around long term. He, the, the rumor is that Feige and Sony are, you know, squat. You know, they're having spirited discussions about that right now. However, there are even more recent rumors that Miles Morales might be coming into live action as early as Spider-Man 4, maybe at least with an end credit scene or something like that. So considering Miles Morales' popularity and the diversity he would bring to the team, he's definitely another possible candidate for the Avengers. But I think it's still early enough in Holland's career, both as an actor and as Spider-Man, that Foggy would want to do one Avengers movie where his Spider-Man is on the team. I think, I think for sure. After all, I think it's a no-brainer. After all, Foggy is trying to make up for having no Iron Man, no Captain America, and no Black Widow. So he needs proven fan favorites. And you don't get more universally popular than Tom Holland's Spider-Man. I mean, he just lights up social media. So based on my list, it's currently most likely, if you take the top six, that the new Avengers lineup would be Spider-Man, Wolverine, Captain America, Star-Lord, She-Hulk, and Black Panther. And then, I mean, I think that's an excellent team. More on my thoughts on that in a moment. But I also want to say that maybe, just maybe, you go to seven members so you can have an OG member back. And in that case, I would select, I have to say, Thor. That, to me, is an excellent lineup. It looks so much like the comics, but yet enough different aspects to it that it feels fresh and distinct to the MCU. To me, this just feels right. And I think Foggy might still have something here. All right, so what do you think? Share your thoughts uh, on the most likely and least likely to join the Avengers down below. Any Hail Marys you want to throw in there? Uh, and of course, you have to include the reasoning. So share those thoughts down below. Subscribe today. And of course, as always, you can check out some more videos right now.